Hello, good afternoon everyone. Hello, nice to meet you again in Obrolan Heritage. Hello. Hello. Hello, Hello Mas Adit, Mas Punto, Mbak Ria, Mbak Nadia, and the others attendees. Okay, uh, thank you for all attendees um, for coming to these discussions, namely Obrolan Heritage or Heritage Talk in 14 editions. Let me introduce myself. My name is Abi, who will be the host. Uh, in these sessions. The Heritage Talk 40 with the title Striving for Excellence, How We Drive Museum Industry During COVID-19 in Study Case Thailand under the Spell Museum, participatory, only, participatory online platform with co-create content to promote museum industry for long-term development. Thank you attendees for your waiting. And now let me introduce for the rundown. Um, yeah, the discussion, the discussion will open at 4 p.m. And then for the second one, moderator will open the discussion and have an introduction about the heritage talk and the speakers and the rundown. Moderator will invite the Secretariat of Network to give a brief explanation about the network. The network secretariat who will give the explanation about the network as well. Every network members will present their current studies and strategy during pandemic in COVID-19 era. Maybe around in 30 until 5 minutes for each. After that, the Q&A sessions. For all attendees, have to write the questions in column comment below in English as well. And then for the last, the closing session. And don't forget to take photo session in the last session. So don't go anywhere and still with join with us. Okay, now we have to invite Miss Nadia. Hello, Miss Nadia Rinandi. Hello, Abi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Miss Nadia. Thank you for join and invite us. Okay, uh, so maybe we can start the presentation. Miss Nadia will moderate the presentation session. Time is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Abi. Hello, everybody, and especially uh, hello and thank you uh, to join this uh, Oberland Heritage or Heritage uh, Talk. This is the 40th uh, Uh, of heritage talk that uh, we initiate uh, this talk uh, since uh, 2016 with the uh, Indonesian Institute of uh, Architects. And uh, for uh, this talk, uh, we also uh, would like to say uh, very much a thank you for the Department of Architecture, uh, Trisakti University, who facilitate uh, us uh, for uh, this talk uh, this time. <clears throat> and today, uh, our uh, colleagues uh, from uh, the uh, Training Post Heritage Network uh, member from Thailand, Dr. Uh, Hatayrat Estrella Montien, will uh, give a presentation about uh, under the uh, title of uh, Under the Spell of the Museum. <clears throat> This is, uh, he will uh, talk uh, about how we promote museums when you can go uh, to the museum. So uh, Dr. Estrella Montien is a museum consultant and lecturer working in a field of museum planning. She was a uh, driving force behind the start to completion of Ban Hollanda, an information center of Thai Dutch relation. She has uh, also a particular interest in museum for social change and decolonizing museum. <clears throat> so in this uh, heritage talk uh, today, Uh, we will also have a special uh, participant from the Dutch Trading Post uh, Heritage Network uh, Asia. This network was established in 2014 uh, with the uh, initiative from uh, Hirado. <clears throat> Our colleagues from Hirado will uh, introduce about this network uh, later after uh, Dr. Estrella uh, finish uh, her uh, presentation. And uh, after uh, <clears throat> she uh, finished the presentation, we would also invite uh, the Dutch uh, Trading Post uh, Heritage uh, Network member to uh, also to explain what uh, their experience uh, during the pandemic. 
uh, so uh, Estrella, could you please uh, join? And before that, I will say hello to uh, uh, the two members of uh, Heritage uh, that's Sharing Post Heritage Network. Hello, uh, Rosli. <laughs> hello, uh, Remco and uh, Kumiko. Hello. Uh, so uh, thank you for join uh, and uh, for everybody. Uh, <clears throat> Please uh, let me give this uh, to Estrella. So please, Estrella. Okay. Hello, everyone. How are you guys doing? Mm -hmm. oh, so good to be online again. And um, I hope everyone uh, are doing well. And uh, Nadia, could you please share the slide? Uh -huh. Let's drive into it. Today, um, I'm going to tell you about the project that I've been working on during this uh, COVID-19. Uh, first of all, let me introduce myself. Once again, my name is uh, Dr. Hatayrat Estela Muntian. I am a museum consultant. Uh, my work, as most of you know me, is from my work at uh, Ban Hollanda, which is the historical information center about Thai debt relation in Thailand. And also I work uh, on other projects as a consultant for uh, last year in um, National Housing Authority, the Virtual Museum, and work as a lecturer. Uh -huh. So uh, my work actually since uh, last year, I based in Thailand about six months and I go to work overseas six months. So it's half, half. Uh, since uh, COVID-19 hit Thailand around, uh, around January last, um, I remember myself uh, start to uh, staying home, adopt a staying home policy since February at the end of September. February, because uh, I have, uh, you know, uh, on top of this, I have a bad uh, health condition, which I have a high blood pressure, which Thai government issue that, uh, you know, people who had certain disease uh, should stay home. So I stay home early. In this period, I found an online group uh -huh, called uh, and there's a spell of museum. See how bound it is. And there's a spell of museum in Thai by Pitya Palawajai Bhagban. It means uh, when you go to museum, your heart is blossoming. That's the name of the group in Thai. Uh -huh. So uh, this museum start in in early March. Uh -huh. Could you go for the next presentation, please? Next slide. So during, and during COVID-19 pandemic, it forced us, you know, you people cannot go to experience the site, the on-site experience in the museum. So it's reshaped us as museum professional to rethink how you can promote museum while still at home. Uh -huh. It's quite challenging to keep people interest and motivation that of going, you know, in, in the museum industry. So uh, this uh, group is, is uh, one solution that I use to combat my solidarity uh -huh, for my mental health uh -huh, because I also need to interact with others. And uh, also for museum professional. Next slide, please. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, solidarity had changed the way how people live and socialize and we have to rethink how we could access to uh, cultural assets uh -huh, when travel become difficult and in my case you know my idea of working overseas this year 
it just not possible. I, I don't see it happening. And by the uh, prediction of it, ITA, it won't resume the same until 2023. 20, uh -huh. And so what are we going to do? You know, I, I, I want to go to Indonesia now. I, I can't. Uh -huh. uh, so we have to rethink about how we experience a uh, museum when we're still at home. So next, next slide, please. Mm -hmm. So this group were found on uh, Facebook. And uh, I can uh, say that there are two big group uh, of audience that come to participate in this uh, platform. One is general public. Uh, which uh, museum and non-museum goer, uh, museum goer and non-museum goer, and second group is museum professionals. So, this uh, two months, we have a thousand member. Uh -huh. Next slide, please. So uh, the goal, my goal is to promote the museum industry for long-term development. I will elaborate uh, how this Facebook group uh, can promote in a long-term uh, on museum industry in, in a later on. Okay, next. Mm -hmm. So my objective uh, to do this group is first, I want to create a high quality online community for museum lover, let's say that, uh -huh. museum, both museum professional and people who love going to museum. And so they can access uh -huh, to the site and enjoy a meaningful story of each other. Uh -huh. And uh, can also see museum and cultural heritage across the world because in this group, there's not only Thai museum that people put their story, but also uh, if you participate, you will see uh, uh, if almost every country now, like uh, we have seen Latvia, museum in Latvia, in Italy, in Mexico, and all sort of, uh, all type of museum and all different country. So, uh, my second objective is to create a digital resource that enhance on-site experience for visitor. Well, this is like, you know, when you go online and you, uh, you want to go to restaurant, uh, you find uh -huh, the stuff online about the review of the restaurant. And this is the same uh, idea that uh, people review their experience uh, in, in digital. Uh -huh. And when, when you have that information, it's helped you to decide, oh, maybe when I go to that country, I want to go to visit in this particular museum because I've seen it uh -huh, before. This kind of uh, my objective. Uh -huh. And third, uh -huh, create cross-border dialogue exchange good practice with international partner and promote cultural diplomacy. So what is this all about? So now I'm thinking big. It's not just about a uh, Thai museum. It's not about Thai people posting their personal story online in this Facebook group, but also, now we have Indonesia. Thank, uh, thank you, Nadia, that uh, be my first partner to create the same model uh, in your yeah. country. So it will be called Under Spell of Museum Indonesia, where you can, you know, what excited about this? It's just, you're not tr just looking for information by media by the source of agency news but you look you have an access to personal archive you know my picture and you know people picture different perspective are presented in this forum uh you know information by local uh -huh. 
that uh, we can have access to. So this is my three objectives uh -huh, to create this group. Next, please. Well, the approach that I use uh -huh, in this uh, we call community of practice, right? So it's a Facebook group. It's co-creating practice or in museum world, we call this participatory uh, approach with uh, using um, community of practice. Uh, first is the domain. The domain is member who are brought together and share their passion about museum and cultural visitation uh, member come. Second is the community, the collective learning that born them over time by exchanging image information, viewpoint, and sentimental value. So people know each other uh, via this uh, community, online community. And that leads to the third, the practice, which is the interaction and uh, exchange between member produce resort in pictorial archive, personal story, and collective memory. So they all share this uh, wonderful story and picture and you know they have conversations. So these are the community of practice mm -hmm. that uh, uh, implement in this uh, order. Next, please. So look at statistic. By two months, we got 1,000 each member, 1,100 member. It's rising. And 69% uh, are women uh -huh, and 30% are men. And the group, uh -huh, the big eight group is uh, 35 to 44, uh -huh, which is uh, skyrocket. And uh, from, yeah, mostly Thailand and there's some Indonesia, uh, some people from the state and United Kingdom and, and other country. So, well, what can we learn from this statistic? It's quite interesting for me as a museum professional that uh, when I see people posting their story on the on the platform uh -huh, how they share their experience uh -huh. uh, like uh, one person at eight or 50 uh -huh, their uh, occupation is they retire uh -huh, house uh, they, they are retired and they travel uh, around the world to uh, see a museum with their family or their daughter and what kind of uh, thing that they are interested in uh-huh and um, there's like some like it's a good sort for visitor study for me to see what object they are interested in what kind of you know time that they spend in the museum or outside mm -hmm. So from the post, you see a lot different story that you can understand your visitor better. Next. <coughs> so these are the posts that uh, people post about. Exhibition review, museum review, UNESCO heritage site their fabric object, uh -huh, and you know, display, travel story. Also shop, souvenir, cafe, and I also, <coughs> sorry, post the idea of museum activism, which is um, the thing that I want to implement in Thailand. So I share this idea how I want to implement the new practice. And there are some people that that interested in this, uh -huh. also museum planning, finance, science, virtual communication, education, and 
ano, nails and mm-hmm. even like a photography moment in the museum, people share their sentimentals. A story uh, um, about museum in this forum. I think it's quite interesting. Next. So, of course, this is not the only museum Facebook group uh, in the country. There are many others. Uh, but what I found that we are different from other museum groups is that, you know, there. There are some member in this uh, Zoom meeting, they can confirm if my hypothesis is right or, or not. Uh, but what I say that this is different from other group is the character, like this is fun loving museum community. And what's astonishing about this is high quality content that people put in, you know, they put a lot of effort telling the story, find the best picture, and that lead to it's so joyful to read. Uh-huh. And it's something fun, um, but also uh, educational uh-huh. and open your world. Uh-huh. I just gave an example um, earlier that you know, there was one member posting about uh, the picture of museum in Dublin, the National Museum in Dublin. Well, usually when uh, you go to uh, National Gallery or National Museum, the, um, the interior, the background interior, often are red. Mm-hmm. It's like National Gallery London, National Gallery Singapore, National Gallery Sydney, uh, all background uh, in red color. But when this member posing National Gallery Dublin, it blue. Mm-hmm. It's quite um, extraordinary blue, uh-huh. which I have never seen anywhere before. So this is eye opening for me as a museum planner uh, that, oh, they also use this color uh, in museum interior, which I never have uh, seen it before. And also uh, one post is about uh, museum, uh, art, history of art museum in, in Austria, in Vienna. So, you know, I, I was so confident as I study art history that you know I went for the right reason, the right object. So I went to see Velasquez and you know have a picture. Uh-huh. But when a member posting the object, uh-huh, I think it was the Apollo, uh, uh, you know, God, and which uh, like a. Uh, uh, to keep a salt and pepper, some sort of that thing. And he said, this is the thing. And people don't really know about that being kept in this museum. I was so overwhelmed by this because I went to that museum, but I had an eye on something else, but actually there were other things. So people, uh, conti- uh, contribution um, had been um, had had opened my eyes uh, personally and uh, professionally, so um, it's also like different perspective. Uh, what important to them and what important to me, and uh, now I learned something new. Uh-huh. And then I say, you know, this is a lot of variety of content, like all kind of content from museum review, from travel, from, uh, you know, one object, of uh, one favorite object. Uh-huh. And, and other thing is no political or not yet <laughs> post uh, on this uh, museum group. So it's quite present to, to Joy and our um, participations uh, level are very high. People are posting like in two months, there are 700 posts uh-huh, from member, 
and uh, I think it now it's more and more 5,000 image uh -huh, that been putting in around the world. So it's quite a learning resort that I never thought of it before. Next, please. So of course, uh -huh, um, the platform is great, but also I think the how you lay out the characteristic of the group mm -hmm. is also important. Your style of uh, moderation strategy, because when you you know this is not nothing new actually. People have Facebook group all the time. You know, in in museum in in you know all kind of group. Uh, but often you see when you have Facebook group, you as a moderator, as an admin, you are the only one that playing in that group eventually, uh -huh. because you know you posting it uh, and not many people respond to your post. I'm not pretending that I'm a, I'm an expert, but I'm sharing with you what I think would work for me. Uh -huh. That how I I create this uh online community. First of all, it's personal. I make this personal. I don't want to be an institution or the guru or, you know, set up this platform and but it it's conversation over a lecture. It's the story that I tell my friend, how I tell my family, how I tell uh, people and I, uh, I don't need to be a, you know, museum expert all the time. But in the meantime, when I know something, um, quite a uh, detail, I tell those details. So if you, uh, if you participate in this forum, you will see that it's more personal than being institutions or you know some way that you know people look up to not in it's not uh -huh. second thing is i think it's very important is connecting your audience with your heart this is you know like the key of all thing i think personally because when you do thing with your passion when you do thing that you enjoy it's different it's so different you know, I, I didn't do this post as a chore. It's not my duty to post anything. But when you, you can tell, you know, people who are admin of uh, any uh, group uh, that you participate, they're doing it like a chore. They're doing it with no emotion almost. When they put a link on, so this is this, and go look at it, guys. So there are no conversation, you know. Even when I post a link about the news, about uh, uh, I summarize it. I look at it and I say, you know, this is a hot news now. What's happening to summarize and you know find out more, and then I put the link. Uh -huh. But you have to have conversation first uh -huh, to take people to engage with people, and a lot of people are interested in you know what's go around and uh, uh, a lot of news link that been posted on 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 my group uh, have a lot of light mm -hmm. so third um, encourage respondent to feel social sometimes you know you also need them to participate you throwing a open question like what's your favorite top 10 uh favorite museum or the the last one i put on like if you can travel now uh -huh, the three museum that you want to go now is uh what you know things like that to encourage them to uh, respond to feel social to have this place as you know that they belong to having any kind of conversation and I think it's very important that you have daily posts uh -huh, uh -huh, that you post uh, every day, not like a show. I post like 
you know, sometimes three or four posts a day, but we limit it to five posts a day by member because uh, if, you know, everyone posting, then uh, five, you know, 10, it's, it's so overwhelming. So people cannot really follow. So now we limit like five posts a day uh, for people. So mostly people like post like one or two. Me, I post uh, three or four. Uh, sometimes it's a good day I post five. <laughs> but I post daily and uh, my post doesn't have to be long, doesn't have to be a lecture. It can be like I screw uh, for uh, my uh, phone and saw the picture and I thought of something. So I just post it like uh, I remember I have a picture of the uh, the chandelier in, in uh, the Rax Museum like uh, two years ago in my post. So I post that picture and tell them about, uh, you know, this, this was uh, the new invention uh -huh, in, in, uh, by Philip, that uh, LED light, uh, lighting and so on. So it's just one picture, simple, but you have to, to really, um, really driving, doing it and doing it with passion. And I also host monthly competition. It just, you know, because I was so overwhelmed by the level of engagement that people contribute. So I want to give something back to them. And so I went to uh, TaylorMade. I asked my graphic designer friend, uh -huh, thank you again for Fayen Studio to support me on this. So she designed a logo and I went to, uh, to, to the tailor and made a canvas bag and you know, hold a competition on the mu International Museum Day that people share their favorite museum. Over two days, there were 30 posts and 30 quality posts about their favorite museum. And only five people got the prize. And uh, second month, I host another competition for the t-shirt. Uh -huh. I miss going to museum with you. So this, I make it special for people to, and I host another competition. This month, uh, next month is more exciting because I have people join me in, you know, giving away uh, their gift. Mm -hmm. I have uh, RCB, uh, River City uh, Gallery gift tickets uh, to Van Gogh exhibition, uh, Van Gogh, um, you know, digital exhibition because next month on the July 29 is commemoration 130 years of when God passed away. Uh -huh. So I thought we would do something special. So uh, I found, uh, I found, I bought a teacup that paint of, uh, by the, the painting of Van Gogh, like four set of teacup, very beautiful. And my friend uh, giving, uh, who own a coffee roaster, will make a special blend for this. And another friend who have a business in that biscuit, uh, the, the, she also will give away uh, the stuff with, uh, together and ticket to, to see uh, this show. So it's a co-creating community. Uh -huh. This, you know, this is a long, it's, it's a journey that, you know, start to unfold and I quite enjoy it and see a lot of people uh, join me in. <laughs> and so that's, you know, a uh, monthly competition. Another strategy that I use, you know, sometimes you just get blocked from, I don't, don't know what to post, you know, I'm not social media specialist. Someday I wake up, I have no idea. So I use social media calendar, mm -hmm. which have, you know, idea laid down in each uh, day that what I can post today. You write them down. Uh -huh. If you, 
you know, there are those for sale. And if you want me, I can send you those. There's a trick or, you know, certain open question or posting about certain things. So that could help you to drive the this platform. Okay, next. Next, please. The point is how this contribute to long-term museum industry development. You see, it's for some of you, it's like, oh, this is nothing new. This is, you know, people posting picture online, it's silly and, you know, but you know what? If you familiar with uh, museum experience theory by John Paul and, uh, you know, uh, this is a classic museum theory. You see it on my slide here. On on uh, on the bottom, this is um, written like 20 years ago. So they have a revision on the top one. So basically, museum experience are the overlap between personal context, social, cultural context, and physical context. Next, please. So personal context mean like prior experience, interest, knowledge, motivation, belief, and values. Uh, so the rest you can read it on on the um, on the on the screen. But to participate in this Facebook group uh -huh, help you to build your insight. You see in picture, you read review, you uh, post a comment, you share an idea, you participate in competition, you write something. And that contributes to your personal context. Uh -huh. So imagine, you know, this is the uh, audience development in micro level. Imagine, you know, you have visitors who have healthy uh, personal context, which means they are interested, they are motivated, they have higher uh, experience and knowledge about the thing that you you showing, uh, and you know at least you know motivation to want to go to visit the museum. They have healthy component of this, so from personal level, which means which means that you have a bigger audience eventually because people are more interested in the museum, are more going and more moderating and it, you know, this drives them to, to go to, to want to go to actual site. You know. If you participate in this, you know, I think some of you are here that you know now is you have a long list of museums that you want to go. Uh, and what happened in the, the bigger picture when people have healthy uh, relationship uh -huh, and this like de demolish their boundary, you know, when um, when people don't know what to do or what to see in the museum and, you know, and but they read the review, they also have this insight that help them to step in the museum world easier uh -huh, that I found that. Um, and I think this contributes to the bigger picture in, in the society, in the museum industry. Next. So what's the future of this group? You know, by far I've done this uh, two months, two months and a half. You know, the response is overwhelming. And uh, people want to meet actually. People want to meet and want to go to museum together. And ta-da, we have a sponsor. Uh, that's a good name. Okay, so, um, the first meetup will be um, will be host uh, in in August. Uh -huh. We're planning to do it in August. 
and um, we have a sponsor that want to sponsor this event and we have people that want to join this event. Second thing is um, it is nearly future. Someone's um, uh, someone post in the Facebook group that you know they are overwhelmed by information that being been written down or been you know posting in this uh, Facebook now they want to go to a lot of places in the world. It would be nice to have a map uh -huh, that can you know uh, now I want to go to um, to Italy. I will just look uh, and click on the map and we'll see the link uh -huh, the the content that and the picture that people have put on it. So uh, there will be a map project that we will take this content to put it up in, in the world so that um, the uh, uh, member can be easy access to, to see the review and pictures when they go overseas or when they want to visit. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's very exciting as well. Uh, for me that, you know, I travel a lot, so I, I could make a good use of it. Uh, and also the uh, cooperation with Thai Library Project. So um, this will be, uh, um, we are doing uh, the project uh, together. Mm -hmm. uh, it's still uh, confidential, but there are, you know, my point is that there are people who step in uh -huh, because they see value of what we're doing here and want to help us amplify what uh, the content, uh -huh, the quality of conversation that we are talking in the larger scale by putting money and effort into it. And also, the last thing is community activism exercise. You know, I've been um, working in this museum industry for 15 years this year, and I want to try something new, which uh, like museum activism, you know, the new, uh, the new uh, uh, definition of museum by ICOM uh, last year in Tokyo, they talk about museum for equality, museum of, you know, like the word like social justice, the word like, you know, that um, humanity, you know, this kind of word we haven't seen it before. It was not in the older version of museum definition. We were talking about learning, enjoyment, and so on. But in this decade, Museum have different role, and this is the dynamic of the future. And I want to practice it personally. I want to practice it, and I and I found people who want to exercise it together. So we will have a subgroup of museum activism group that will be uh, have a meeting. So we will meet with a museum professional and activists in Thailand. So those uh, two will, will join in, in, in this. And let's see what it unfolds. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, the future of this group that so far, but this is two months. Next. So for those who are my friends in that trading post, heritage network, what are in it for you? So I think we've been having this network for how many years? Five, six years together? And our communication to public is still limited because uh, um, because there's one way of course we have Facebook page, we have one admin or two and not ongoing and so on. We, we might, if you set up this group uh -huh, under your member or your country, so we can re strategize how we communicate our work 
to public and uh, because you know the way before this we we build the content and we find the audience right uh -huh. but this is the other way around we build audience at large uh -huh, everyone and we put our content so it's a real strategy how we uh, communicate to public uh -huh. and also if you join this uh, project uh, I think it will also tighten our collaboration between members I mean, don't get me wrong, meeting uh, once a year is nice. So, you know, it's like family reunion. But also, we have so much more to share. We have different expertise in our medium network. We have world class scholar, we have meteorologists, we have best architect, we have conservation technique we have so much more and more than just you know meeting once a week um that limits our potential but if we can do something in regular basis uh -huh, that could lead to something new and also my last point is that if you know now we have uh I like and I distribute my work and you know, promoting that uh, trading post on this forum. Nadia, uh, accept my invitation. Thank you so much. So Indonesia will have a, a Facebook group as well, which is have different core content. So it will be a museum uh, and heritage site portrait from uh, conservation uh, practice. Uh -huh. This is something so exciting because uh, her office has been in the industry, especially in this industry for a long time. And I love to see those photo and you know read the story, how to uh, renovate certain site, what kind of post you do. And you know, this cannot be learned only once a year but can be learned like monthly basis, you know, reading in the forum, in the, you know, on your own time and your own time. Mm -hmm. And also, this is the cheapest uh, way to uh, promote, uh, promote your work across the globe. <laughs> like India had uh, one uh, group, uh -huh, but uh, I will encourage uh, my uh, my member to go on the forum and see your work and you know they they plan to use it and, and so on. So this will be more pleasant to the world. This is uh, like in, in very local mm -hmm. and so this is about today. I hope by the end of this um some of you will consider uh, to set up this uh, under the spell of museum in your country and help us work, um, you know, build stronger community as a global platform. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you, Estrella, uh, for your uh, very nice and uh, interesting uh, presentation. And uh, we are uh, very uh, motivated uh, to join uh, and to adapt uh, this uh, program uh, in Indonesia. So uh, maybe uh, I can. Uh, explain a bit what uh, 
our institution uh, had done. Uh, so since uh, we are uh, not uh, working uh, in a museum industry, but uh, we are uh, very uh, willing to uh, adapt this uh, program uh, in uh, Indonesia. Uh, and uh, we also have uh, kind of uh, a database about the heritage uh, building in Indonesia. So we uh, adjust uh, this uh, under the spell of the museum uh, into uh, uh, heritage building and uh, heritage district. So we uh, already uh, launched in uh, Instagram. Uh, it's called uh, Force and Beyond because uh, our institution uh, had the uh, inventory uh, of uh, the force and fortification in Indonesia in 2007 and 2010. So we have uh, 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 kind of a big uh, database about the force in Indonesia. So. Uh, we use uh, that database to uh, create uh, this uh, program, but uh, we will uh, start uh, posting a kind of uh, article or uh, photos and uh, everything about uh, the forts uh, starting uh, in uh, next month in July. So uh, for the uh, all participants, uh, maybe uh, you are still uh, have questioning about the uh, that's trading post heritage network. So uh, I would uh, like uh, to invite uh, our uh, colleagues uh, from uh, Hirado that's trading post uh, as an uh, uh, institution who initiates uh, this uh, uh, network in uh, 2014. So uh, please, uh, Hirado, that's a trading post, uh, Remco uh, Frolk or uh, Kumiko Sakamoto, uh, could you uh, explain about uh, this uh, network and also explain about uh, what's uh, your experience in the Hirado, that's trading post uh, during this uh, COVID-19? Thank you. Okay, thank you, Nadja, uh, for the introduction, and thank you, Estrella, for your uh, very interesting talk. Uh, very uh, happy to be uh, part of the lecture or talk today. Uh, so, uh, first of all, uh, as you requested, Nadja, uh, let me briefly explain a little bit about the Dutch Trading Post Heritage Network. Uh, so, uh, the in 2014, the uh, director of uh, our museum in Hirado, uh, which is the Dutch, uh, the site of the former Dutch trading post here, um, the director found that uh, we always uh, study uh, the local uh, heritage sites from a local perspective. So we always look at the Japanese uh, uh, circumstances and the interaction between Japanese and the Dutch uh, here in Hirado 400 years ago. However, uh, the more uh, we research, there's more and more links with other Asian cities uh, came up and uh, actually most of the trade was a part of the Asian trade, not the direct trade with Holland. So we were wondering what other heritage sites still exist in Asia. And we, we realized that we know actually very little about uh, all the other heritage sites around uh, Asia and what's going on there. So uh, then the director um, proposed to set up a kind of a network uh, to uh, link uh, the places that used to trade with each other uh, again. So that was the uh, start of the Dutch Trading Post uh, Her Heritage Network. And um, that was, uh, we had the first meeting in uh, 2015. And the uh, first me official meeting uh, was in Jakarta, where the network was set up uh, in 2015. And now we have 13 members uh, in seven different countries across uh, Asia. Uh, so India, Sri Lanka, uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, uh, Taiwan, and Japan. 
uh, and um, of course we focus on the heritage of the Dutch training post in uh, in these uh, these areas. Uh, and uh, the goal of the network, uh, maybe uh, I can show. Uh, can I share my screen? Is that okay? Yes, uh, okay, you can share uh, your screen. Okay. Oh. Uh, I'm just waiting for the... Yes. Okay. Yes, you can try. Yes, can you see? Oh, uh, okay. yes. Yeah, I just wanted to show the uh, the, um, the website that we have. So this is uh, the website of the Dutch uh, Training Post Heritage Network. Um, and uh, so it basically at the moment we have uh, three main aims. And the first one is to share uh, knowledge and uh, encourage research between our different uh, members. So that's the main aim. That's why we come together once a year uh, to share our experience and uh, our knowledge about all the different uh, training posts. And then uh, I would like to stress that this is um, very important. It's a local initiative. So not initiative by Dutch government or from a Dutch perspective, but uh, it's uh, I think we think it's important that uh, local heritage, even though it's maybe related to Dutch trade, is uh, owned uh, by the local community. Uh, so local, uh, there's a lot of uh, knowledge in the local communities and local specialists. And so our aim is to share and uh, knowledge uh, first on the, uh, between uh, the member cities uh, in, in Asia. And then Second one is uh, initiate, initi initiate and promote exchange on different levels. So cultural, economic, educational, and personal. And then the third one is uh, increase awareness about VOC history as well. And uh, just to uh, get people more aware of what kind of uh, heritage sites are still around uh, and what the links between our cities were. I think this is important that uh, I think the a lot of the relations that the cities had with each other are kind of uh, lost uh, and not so well known. So it's, uh, it's an aim to create a bit more awareness about this. Uh, so we haven't added, uh, in our in Indian uh, member on this map yet, but these are the locations of uh, the uh, various uh, trading posts. And if you look at our website, you can also find more information about, uh, about our members and uh, what uh, is still visible of the heritage sites today. So that was a quick uh, overview of what the network does. Uh, should I continue with uh, how the corona epidemic has affected our museum? Uh, yes, uh, please. Okay. So, uh, yeah, the, um, the coronavirus reached uh, the, uh, Japan a little later in April uh, 11th, uh, the, um, kind of like a, not a full lockdown, but uh, some emergency situation was uh, uh, called in Japan. Uh, and therefore the museum here also had to close. Uh, so our museum was closed from April 11th till May 24th. Um, and uh, after that, we were only open for local visitors, only from the Nagasaki area uh, until June 19th. So we just reopened for uh, public uh, just uh, about two weeks ago. Um, and uh, it's, been quite uh, hard for the museum. There's very little, uh, little visitors. Uh, so in, in April, uh, we uh, were down 95%. Uh, and then in May, uh, 
because you're only open for local people, we had a reduction in visitors of 99%. So only 1% of normal <laughs> amount of visitors. Um, yeah, so we, uh, we have to take some measures to first for, of course, for safety of our um, customers. So when they enter the museum, they have to write down the contact details. Uh, so if anything happens, we can contact them and say that maybe there have been a confirmation of cases. But uh, here on uh, Hirado is a small island in Nagasaki prefecture. We have not had any confirmed cases of Corona. Uh, so uh, we feel it's quite safe, but of course, when people come from uh, other places, uh, you never know, so we write down the details. And then people have to wear masks, so we took them off now, mm -hmm. but uh, we have to wear masks in the museum, also visitors, otherwise they can un uh, enter. And also, of course, hand spray, this kind of thing. And we stop doing the, uh, usually we have like games in the museum and all like hands-on uh, exhibition, but we had to close all that because uh, it's uh, too much risk on affection. Uh, and also we don't provide any guiding anymore. Usually when we have tour groups, we can guide them around and that gives a much more value to the museum and the uh, way they perceive the exhibits, but uh, we cannot do that anymore. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's quite uh, hard for the museum, uh, not financially able to uh, uh, keep this up for a long time. Uh, so things we did during the uh, uh, pandemic is when the museum was closed, we started posting online uh, content on uh, Instagram uh, of the different exhibits. So because people cannot come anymore. So then we posted a picture and an uh, explanation. So it's kind of like online uh, museum. Uh, and that was received quite well. We got a lot of uh, likes and uh, feedback on the content. And uh, now we also decided to uh, start with a, a YouTube channel just today. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'll post the link to the first <laughs> first YouTube video on the on the in the chat. Yeah, so that is the situation in Hirado. Uh, so we are moving a bit more on the online world, virtual world. And then, uh, yeah, I also got a message from uh, Dejima about their situation. Is it okay that I continue with that, Nadja? Uh, okay, uh, since uh, Dejima uh, couldn't join uh, this afternoon, so I think it will be better if uh, you can uh, read uh, that uh, message from Dejima so we can uh, know the situation uh, also uh, in Dejima. Yeah. Okay, so in yeah, in uh, so they are of course same situation in Japan. So Dejima and Hirado are about two hours uh, away uh, from each other, and uh, they have a bit more of a larger site uh, and uh, uh, quite a lot of visitors uh, always. Uh, but they also uh, had to close down uh, from April tenth. They closed down. And even before that, they already stopped uh, hands-on exhibitions and uh, also volunteer guides. Uh, there's a lot of volunteer guides that uh, also some in like uh, uniform, like period dress to uh, uh, interact with people, but they had to stop all that kind of thing uh, because of the risk of infection. And uh, now they have a lot of safety measures uh, in place. Uh, so they opened again uh, on May 3rd, uh, sorry, on June the 1st, they uh, reopened again. Uh, and then they decided to make it free for local people. So local people can, uh, until September, they can come to Dejima for free. Uh, just so that uh, uh, create a chance for local people to discover their own heritage and uh, at least get some people coming to the site because uh, they were down uh, 90%. They had in June uh, to the three week, first three weeks, they had 2,400 visitors. That's 90% down. And then they have a lot of like safety measures in the site. So uh, you have to have a, a 
medical check, uh, not a temperature check when you go in and you have to uh, wash your hands and uh, wear mask and also staff wear mask. And then they, uh, they have stickers everywhere saying don't touch uh, exhib exhibits and this kind of thing. So, uh, and they announce hourly saying uh, how you should cuff and uh, make sure people keep the distance, uh, this kind of announcement. So um, yeah, th those are the, the, the measures they're taking in Dejima, but uh, also quite a big drop in tourists, yeah. Can I ask a question? Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> not yet, uh, Estrella, could you please uh, hold on a second because uh, I will uh, invite uh, Rosli uh, from Malacca uh, to talk, uh, to explain about the situation in Malacca. And uh, after Rosli, uh, I will invite uh, Nausad from uh, Muziris uh, Heritage and uh, Maulana Ibrahim from uh, Ternate Heritage Society. So uh, please, uh, Rosli, your uh, time is uh, only three minutes. So please uh, explain it in a uh, very clear and fast. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, hello everyone. Actually, uh, for Malacca, uh, Mr. Afzal will do the talking for three minutes. So Afzal, please. Afzal, yes. Please unmute Afzal, yes. Hello, can you, can everybody hear me? Yeah. All right. Okay, just a very quick um, update on the situation in Malaysia regarding the COVID-19 and how it impacts towards the, the cultural heritage. Uh, in particular, uh, we have our, what we call as restrictive movement since 18 of March, I think so, if I'm not mistaken. And the government of Malaysia has been doing uh, a very quite uh, effective uh, in the sense of how they want to control it, where they have like every two weeks, they will give an update on the policy from the, uh, from the government. How does the movement of the people uh, and how can they react towards the situation? So every two weeks, we will have an update and there's a daily update in the television and also radio uh, talking about all this, um, updating on all what is government is doing. Uh, so in the sense of cultural heritage itself, uh, in terms of museum, that sort of thing, it falls under a uh, few of the items that cannot be um, used or open during that particular period of time, especially for the at least uh, for the first two period of the time, uh, which is about two months. Um, and during that time, I would say almost tourism is brought to the knees and including the museum activities as well. Uh, so yeah, uh, in terms of our, on our part right now, uh, as mentioned just now by Dr. Estrella is uh, like the museum department of Malaysia so also introduced what we call as virtual uh, tourist guiding as well through Facebook, uh, which is, I found it very interesting, but it would be very nicer for like, I mean, uh, youngsters like us, I would say I, I'm a little bit young, uh, if we can have this online experience in a PS4 game, PlayStation game, because we have like <laughs> GT4, what's or not, isn't it? So this experience can be transferred into a game platform uh, it would be very nice uh, for 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 the for the children, especially uh, instead of they just playing uh, 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 nonsense type of uh, platform, they might have a proper platform that they can actually learn about uh, anything about history or whatnot. So I think that is another way that we can. I mean, it's something which is has been mentioned about uh, among the kids because they use like uh, wedding activities. They put it inside the PS4 game. I don't know what is the name of the game. Uh, they, uh, so it symbolized Malaysian culture as well in the video game as well. So there's a few things that I found it very interesting uh, as been mentioned by Dr. Israel uh, as well. So yeah, that's about it from our side in Malaysia. Thank you. Um, thank you, Afsal. Uh, Afsal. Uh, now I would like to invite uh, Muziris Heritage uh, from India. Please, uh, Nausad, uh, could you uh, explain about your experience?
Hello, no chat. Hello, no chat. Or if uh, uh, no chat is uh, not ready yet, uh, I would uh, like to invite uh, Maulana Ibrahim uh, from uh, Ternate Heritage Society uh, to explain uh, what the situation is in Ternate. Maulana? Thank you, Nadia. Yeah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello, everyone. Greetings from Ternate. Uh, I would like to express my, my thankful for Nadia who hosts this uh, great event. Hello, Remco. Hello, Estela. Very nice presentation. Uh, Pak Haji Rosli, Afzal Azhari. Dan semua teman-teman, Bapak Ibu, senior-senior saya di Ternate, ada ahli-ahli museum di sini. Suatu kesempatan yang berbahagia bagi saya bisa ikut berbagi bagaimana situasi di Ternate. Uh, right now, what's happening in Ternate, actually, uh, totally some kind of anomaly, anomaly things with what's happening in Jakarta. So when you, don't you think Indonesia is a, as a country and the regulation is happening the same with the big city and small city, because uh, what's happened here in Ternate is a very small city in Eastern Indonesia. So it's totally different. When people in Jakarta doing the uh, social distancing, physical distancing, we here just uh, live uh, daily, every day like uh, we used to be. Uh, so it is not so different before COVID and after COVID. But even though uh, our local government still try to uh, push uh, to follow the regulation from the national government. So the impact to the museum itself, uh, in Ternate, we only have uh, actually two museums. The first museum established since 1980s, 1981, if I'm not mistaken, from our national government, uh, state that uh, our Sultan Palace become a museum, the Memorial Museum of Ternate, Sultanate of Ternate. So since 1981, that is the only one museum in Ternate. You can visit the Sultan Palace. It's open for public and see the collection inside. We have a collection, uh, a gift from Malacca, a gift from uh, Thailand, from Japan, from China, all over the country who are uh, doing a spice trade with us in 15th century. Even before that, uh, we have already contact with the Arabic nation and Chinese and Malay people. So we still have the collection from that uh, nation still keep in, in the Sultanate Palace or also a museum. Uh, some of our academic or our experience when we visit the museum is like a living museum. Because when you go to the, Sultan, uh, the Sultanate Palace or the museum, you can uh, still see the uh, tradition Every week we have three tradition uh, from the servants of the Sultan uh, to practice, to maintain the heritage of the Sultanate. So at least there is a weekly activity in the museum by the Sultanate servants three times every week. So when you visit Ternate, the best time to Camp or flight or landing in Ternate is in Sunday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Because in the three days, you can see the local tradition to prepare the flower for the uh, ancestry of the Sultanate. So it starts from nine in the morning until uh, in the evening. So there's several process of tradition still happening until nowadays. Rather than there is a COVID-19 or something, blah, blah, blah that ritual is still happening inside the Sultan Palace. And people can come to the palace and see that. There is no uh, forbidden or something to go to the museum here, especially in the Sultan Palace. So uh, for me, it's very unique. The situation happened in 
uh, in Ternate. Not because of very low impact Estrella. Uh, in our province, uh, last week, we have been recorded as the number one province uh, of the dead number of the people who, who caused by COVID-19. Last week, can you imagine? Uh, they make a ratio between the people who are uh, positive with COVID and the death of the number. And North Maluku become one of the, the high rank, ranking in all Indonesia. So uh, even for me, it's kind of like a, a crazy thing in situation like now, it's uh, un, unpredictable. But the Sultan and Palace still open. They still open the still circle. And the other museum, we have uh, the Spice Museum, of course, but uh, before COVID or last year, they are not open yet for public. Uh, even though this museum already have a, what do you call, a, a special, uh, special acknowledgement by the, our national government, government as a museum that's very friendly for the community. So, because every young community can use that museum to doing their daily or weekly activity. And that activity stopped during the COVID-19. So we still follow the procedure in the other museum, the Spice Museum. So the Spice Museum already closed. But what, what happened, the young generation, they make so many activities based on the community uh, with uh, uh, live streaming. The mostly live streaming we use is, here is by Instagram because uh, there's so many young generation who do, during the activity of the community here. So you can visit our Instagram at Ternate Heritage to see what are we doing during this pandemic. So we're still doing activity by online, by live streaming and discussion like this. Uh, last week, I have a discussion about Fort Orani and what's happened to uh, the conservation process in the fort and also in the museum inside the fort. Maybe I think that's enough. It's already almost five minutes, Nadia. Thank you. Terima kasih semuanya. Salam dari Ternate. Okay. Um, uh, thank you, Maulana. So uh, now we have uh, from India, uh, oh, yeah. Nusha, uh, will be uh, explained. So uh, please, uh, Nusha. Good. Hello. Yes, please. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, we already yeah. hear you. Yeah. Very good afternoon. In Kerala, we we were, we are still fighting with COVID. All our monuments are still closed. And actually. Uh, uh, the we, we fought with the COVID and there was uh, almost zero level, but people from outside Kerala and outside India coming to Kerala because many of the people are walking outside India and outside Kerala. They are coming back to Kerala with the COVID. So now we are facing a lot of issues connected with the COVID now. Even though the number is very limited, but the government is taking all the measures and uh, the government is supporting our museum. So there is no issue in maintaining the museum. Our employees are all working, but we are not allowing uh, any public or anybody to visit our museum. Then uh, uh, we are very busy with our continuing uh, restoration work that all already started again. Our, our workforce are all in place and we are mainly focusing uh, our, our restoration work in various sites like in Kotapuram Fort, then Alapura Fort where we are constructing around 21 old museums in our project area. So those works are all going on. Then uh, we used to conduct uh, training for our guides and other connected people and uh, we are planning for our future activities through Zoom and other connected online platform. Then moreover, we usually post one or two or one postings in our uh, Facebook page 
and uh, all digital mediums and we are mainly focusing for our internal uh, domestic tourists uh, by august or september to visit our project and government already finalized the heritage walk program for students where we are planning to have around 1 lakh student by rest of the year and that is 2020 2021 so we will be providing subsidized schemes for our school students they can come stay one day in our project area and they can visit uh, all our museums and uh, it will be free for our school students so we are mainly focusing uh, this 2021 as our domestic program and uh, uh, bringing our on school students to our museum or the project area that's our strategy okay uh, are you finished uh, no sir yeah that's fine. yeah okay uh, thank you uh, thank, thank you for you, Thank you for uh, all the uh, Dutch Reading Post uh, Heritage uh, Network member who uh, already uh, sharing uh, your experience uh, about uh, the situation in the Dutch Reading Post uh, in uh, your cities uh, for us. Uh, and now uh, I would like uh, to uh, read uh, some uh, of the question that uh, we uh, already have. and. Uh, Uh, some of the question uh, are uh, already uh, answers uh, in the chat group, uh, like the question from uh, Afsal Azari, and also the question from uh, Ardina Rosa. Uh, so uh, the first uh, question is uh, from uh, Hasti Tarekat. Uh, greetings from Amsterdam. Uh, congratulations, Estrella, for friends in Indonesia and Asia. What else uh, virtual museum programs in your area? Is there any specific uh, virtual museum that you like a lot? Okay, uh, I think uh, Estrella, could you uh, answer this? Is there any specific uh, virtual museum that you like a lot? And then uh, after that, uh, maybe uh, if uh, there is, uh, th uh, there are uh, some uh, answer from uh, all of you. Okay, um, what I find was interesting during COVID-19 periods is that how we use a virtual museum is not like, you know, uh, it, a lot of major museum um, in Europe or in America have this program already exists and it's always there, but because that we are forced to be at home So we use more online platform. And in Thailand, there's a phenomenal uh -huh, uh, how people become so creative by you know, making an online program. You know, some who love uh, you know, Dali, uh, 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 you know, um, artist lover who use the virtual museum to make a facebook live event to guide other people and i think this is phenomenal we never seen such a virtual museum being used this way before and a lot of people there's like thousands of people like watching a virtual tour together online mm. So I, I, I never seen it, but uh, they are on going program from one of the Facebook page in Thailand called uh, Cell Contour or something like that. And, you know, they just, you know, every week they guide people in a different virtual museum around the world and using their friend or network or expertise to to talk about it and just, you know, sit. so everyone at home can start using this in a new way. So that phenomenal here. Okay, uh, thank you, Estrella. So uh, I think to answer uh, Hasti's uh, question, uh, now because of uh, this uh, pandemic situation, uh, every, uh, almost every m uh, museum in uh, Asia, 
uh, now is uh, going uh, online or uh, at least they can share uh, their collection uh, using uh, online platform and uh, maybe uh, if I may, uh, I would like to uh, inform that uh, since uh, 2017, uh, uh, we also uh, launched a virtual uh, architecture uh, museum. So uh, it's uh, in the website uh, www.architecturenonesia.org. Uh, so please uh, check that uh, we try to uh, collect the database of the uh, architecture uh, in Indonesia after the independence uh, and we try to uh, 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 show to the public uh, with uh, some uh, narration, uh, some uh, story so that uh, 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 we can uh, found this uh, as a virtual uh, museum. So we will um, move to the uh, other uh, question uh, from uh, Angeline uh, Basuki. Uh, this question is uh, for you, Estrella. Uh, it's very interesting uh, practice you have there. If it's possible, could you, uh, for the member of the host, to share the link of this uh, platform here? So uh, I think uh, Ria uh, is already uh, uh, I think uh, we can uh, share uh, your uh, platform uh, here uh, in chat, Estrella. Uh, your uh, Facebook uh, link, Facebook okay. group link. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we, we will uh, share it uh, here, uh, Angeline. And uh, the third question is uh, from Nadia Victorica. Um, Thank you uh, for the great uh, presentation. I'd like to ask, how do you personally respond to the uh, advancement of technology, uh, digitalization, and virtual innovation in relation uh, to the future of uh, museum industry? What uh, strategies uh, should be prepared in capturing the opportunity, especially for uh, countries in Southeast Asia? So this is a quite uh, a long uh, yeah, question, Stella. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, let's break it down. Uh -huh. So first question is how do I personally? What? Let me personally respond to the uh, advancement of technology, digitalization, and virtual innovation in relation to the future of the museum industry. Well, you know, before COVID-19, I would have answered it differently. Uh -huh. But since now the pandemic, thing changed. You know, for a digitalized uh, exhibit, now we have to really think, can we, like, do, you, do people feel safe to put the touch screen? Uh -huh. Right. You know, the interactive, you know, information that being, you know, used before in the museum are, are, are people willing to participate so that you know the first uh, challenge that come up and uh, there are uh, so like I say there are a few other options that been explored like uh, the virtual museum how you use it uh -huh, to uh, to uh, promoting um, your museum industry or connecting to to people so like for example i i mentioned the uh, the guided tour online and today i present the active facebook group and co-create platform and i think there's a like much more to to explore in uh in in this uh category of uh of digital uh, experience and uh, just be creative. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, could you answer the second question from uh, Nadia Victorica? Uh, what strategies uh, should be uh, prepared in capturing the opportunity, especially for countries in Southeast Asia? Well, like I say, you know, now we have a different condition. Uh, um, we have uh, 
different uh, struggle by pandemic and but there are also some community uh, some opportunity if we see it. Uh, people are forced to be online uh -huh. um, more than usual mm -hmm. like um, like you know eventually I you know I plan to put my work online in a couple years now uh, now I am forced to do it to work online mostly uh -huh, because uh, uh, traveling overseas is not yet safe or available so um, to keep up with the uh, with uh, opportunity I, I still think that we can also find or tailor experience or solution uh, for people and use this opportunity that people come online a lot more than before uh -huh, to explore and maximize that potential. Does that answer your question? Okay. Um, uh, uh, thank you, Estrella. So uh, we still uh, have time. So uh, I would uh, like to invite if uh, everybody still have question. Um, please uh, write down uh, in a chat. Or uh, Estrella, uh, I think, uh, do you uh, want to uh, I have a question ask? Oh, okay, okay. Please. Uh, I have a question for uh, our partner in Japan. Um, now, uh, your museum has been closed for a while. Is that affect the financial for the museum? How much uh, closing due uh, pandemic affect your financial situation? You know, for some members just India, that's a mention that, you know, there's not much uh, effect in terms of because they are fully supported by government. But I'm just wondering how this pandemic affect, how an effect in the financial segment. Uh, Remco, could you answer this? Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the question, uh, Estrella. Um, the Japanese, the Japanese government has um, put a lot of money uh, towards uh, businesses to help them with the with the crisis. However, uh, because our museum foundation is a private foundation and we run two museums, so we have the Hidalgo Dutch Trading Post as well as the Matsuda Museum, uh, we can only get one uh, subsidy for one museum. So uh, for the Dutch Trading Post, we get no subsidy whatsoever from the government. Uh, so we have to um, somehow uh, survive. Uh, now, I think we are going to talk with the local government to see if they can have some subsidy program for us because uh, we, are, we were down 99%. <laughs> so just 1% visitors. We cannot, even before it was already tough as a museum to survive. But now it's uh, impossible. So uh, yeah, we the online content that we create um, is more for promotion on the long term uh, to engage visitors. But uh, it's more yeah a way to kind of uh, keep us in the picture, you know, that people don't forget about us. But uh, financially, we cannot survive like this. So. Uh, either situation must improve with the visitors coming back again and also buying things from the museum shop or uh, otherwise um, yeah I, I don't know how long <laughs> <laughs> we will make but, uh, that's the reality of the situation yeah so uh, yeah 
Okay, thank you for sharing with us. Yeah. It's okay. uh, been a tough time for all, I think, in different dimensions. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Remco uh, and Estrella. So uh, I would like to uh, invite uh, Molana to uh, uh, give a question because uh, he uh, raised a hand. So please, Molana. Thank you. Uh, actually, it's not a, a kind of question, but a suggestion for all of us who come to this uh, meeting to support each other. Uh, I know that uh, in this room, in this, there's so many experts in museum. So I'm not an expert in museum. My background is uh, uh, architectural. So I study and research about uh, urban heritage. But I think in the global context in this pandemic situation, uh, even before pandemic, museum in Indonesia, uh, it's not as we can imagine museum in Europe or in the United States, something like that. So what's happening when the pandemic coming, uh, it's totally collapsed. Uh, the budgeting, the financial, all stop, and because it's all focused in the uh, pandemic. Uh, for the Ministry of Education and Culture, they all focus in the education aspect because children have to study from home. They have to learn something. They have to uh, rise to the next level. This is the academic year. So what's happened with the culture uh, effect? We here in this room, we can organize more activities, connect each other. For example, as Trela already doing the uh, online and virtual museum in Thailand, or Bahaji Rusli doing in Malacca, and Remco wanna doing in uh, Hirado. Why don't we uh, connect uh, each other to get more viewer, more uh, connect something like that? So we don't do it. It's uh, small way small but uh, connected each other why because 500 or 700 years ago our ancestors are already doing that by the root of the spice they doing by boat they come to visit each other for three or 22 months can you imagine the spanish come to tirore it takes time 22 months we are here in this room only need a, a second to meet each other like this why we don't doing something more like than they do in the past. So this is our opportunity. Uh, this pandemic gives us our opportunity to do something better for the museum future. This is the time to show to the public, this is museum, what's happened to the museum. Uh, in the other side, it's happened in the zoo, for example. This pandemic gives us an open perspective what's happened in the zoo, in Indonesia especially. So we can see what's happening, what, uh, what's going on in the animal, in the pandemic situation. Why don't we do that in museum? I know the Museum of Bank Indonesia Jakarta Museum, something they're already doing, but it's still uh, one by one. Why don't we connect each other, and make it it's a weekly event or something? It's more powerful for us here. Terima kasih banyak. Thank you so much. Um, uh, thank you, Molana. Uh, is there uh, any uh, participant who wants uh, to uh, ask uh, something? So uh, I think uh, the uh, comment from uh, Maulana is uh, very uh, interesting and very important that uh, we should uh, connect it uh, during the situation and hope uh, after this uh, situation. So uh, our uh, institution uh, through this uh, uh, heritage uh, top uh, platform uh, will uh, like uh, to uh, Health uh, or uh, Dust Reading Post uh, Heritage Network uh, to share uh, their uh, experience uh, uh, in their uh, city uh, about uh, their uh, Dust uh, Trading Post. So uh, maybe uh, in a coming month, uh, the next uh, two months, uh, I would like uh, to invite uh, one uh, of you. Uh, one by one uh, every two months uh, to uh, give a presentation about uh, your dad's trading post. We can uh, start with uh, on how uh, uh, Hirado uh, doing uh, the reconstruction uh, of the dad's trading post uh, in Hirado and uh, later uh, Muziris Heritage uh, could uh, 
sharing uh, their uh, experience uh, about uh, what was uh, happened uh, in uh, Kerala and uh, later uh, Malaka, Molana, and uh, I hope uh, other members uh, like uh, uh, Sri Lanka, uh, Tainan uh, will uh, also uh, could uh, join uh, and uh, sharing uh, their uh, uh, experience about this. So, um, is there uh, any question? Uh, oh. For, uh, oh, yeah, uh, Estrella, please. Okay, uh, you know, on top of this, as we always want to collaboration project uh, online or offline, just uh, the note to my members uh, that um, I haven't forgot that uh, some of you have asked me to uh, to uh, host a workshop, uh, especially mostly in Malaysia. I haven't forgot our conversation, and uh, so I'm putting together um, a course. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure yet it will be online, but uh, as soon as we can uh, stru uh, start traveling normally. Uh, this uh, will also be available uh -huh, to uh, to you know uh, host a workshop in your country. I'm thinking of uh, doing uh, with uh, uh, your request in uh, Malaysia, and perhaps Nadia want to have this training as well uh -huh, for storytelling uh, uh, workshop in Indonesia. So just uh, to mention that. Okay. Uh, is there uh, anybody wants to uh, comment or uh, raise question? So if uh, oh yeah, Rem go please. So please, uh, could you unmute? Okay, yes. yeah, thank you. Yeah, sorry, just one last question for uh, Estrella, actually. I, I wonder, um, uh, do you have any information about Baan Hollanda or the Dutch trading posts in uh, Ayutthaya? How are they? I, not, I know that uh, not directly. Yes. I, I, how are they doing? Are they closed down, or are they uh, are they opening again? Or do you have any updates about the museum there? Okay, the the update uh, about the site in Ayutthaya, which I went to visit twice after the you know uh, during the pandemic, the museum um, uh, the the Thai government. Um, put the policy to close uh, a lot of museums and they just uh, recently reopened. And I went to Urban Hollanda as soon as they opened, they are doing great. Actually, there's a lot of people that coming to visit because um, also, you know, some of the museum site in, in the same area were not yet open, but they were first open uh, the first week. Uh -huh, that uh, the government uh, allow. So and there were a lot of, uh, of, of people, but of course there are some uh, regulation that they had to follow. They had uh, for, for museum site here, people need uh, to, uh, to uh, uh, test the temperature uh -huh, before and uh, use the anchor hall like watch your hand and sign on the on the paper or use the QR code to sign in the museum so if something happens uh -huh, or someone get infected they can track uh, the government can track uh, the route and inform the other people to watch out or you know to uh, keep a social distance from their family but by far um, it have not happened yet. The situation in Thailand is 
quite um, interesting. We have no case for 29 days in a row. So like no COVID-19 in the country for 29 days, almost a month. So life get back to normal, uh, almost. Uh -huh. So the 1st of July, there will be, uh, you know, the government has uh, put a uh, um, uh, restriction like uh, to, this is the last state of uh, restriction by July 1st, pub will be open. Uh, it's mean that you can drink in a pub or in a restaurant. So, um, so yes, in, in that sense, we are quite lucky. Okay, uh, Estrella, uh, I uh, received a response from uh, Hasti Tarekat. Uh, she share uh, her experience uh, about the cooperation between Indonesia and the Netherlands to increase capacities of museum professional. So uh, I would like to invite uh, Hasti Terekat to uh, share uh, a bit uh, about uh, about this uh, program and what uh, your uh, thing. What do you think? Uh, during uh, this uh, pandemic, uh, is uh, this uh, project uh, could be uh, still uh, running or not? So please, uh, Mbak Hasti. Uh, can you hear me? Oh, yes, yes, hello. Okay. Hi, uh, it's a uh, good morning from Amsterdam. Uh, no, no, good afternoon. It's just uh, uh, 10 to one now. It's gray and cold and windy here. So enjoy the tropical weather of Asian countries. I envy <laughs> all of you. Uh, look at, uh, I have a jacket. Uh, anyway, uh, so um, I, uh, I joined the team uh, between two countries, Indonesia and the Netherlands to increase uh, capacities of museum professionals in Indonesia. And it's been going on since 2018. And then uh, this year, we should uh, organize two more trainings. But because of the pandemic, we have to postpone. And uh, in Netherlands, is the pandemic is now uh, is uh, getting... Uh, uh, well, the pandemic, uh, the, the, the victims are less. And it's, uh, the situation is getting better. So we start to to get back to try to get back to normal. But in the museum world is uh, the, the virtual uh, museums uh, really take over uh, the, 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 the physical visits to the museum. So, and uh, in Indonesia also, uh, the, the former participants of the trainings are very active. Uh, I think uh, some of them also join this, this, uh, these discussions. I noticed uh, from the chats and from the list of the participants. So it's very good. Like uh, Pak Cahaya from uh, Malang. Uh, he's, uh, he's, he's, uh, he's very active in the, in the museum in the East Java in, uh, in Indonesia. And I think uh, uh, the, our museum friends in Indonesia also try to uh, use uh, digital uh, uh, facilities. But what I uh, notice is uh, uh, from uh, digitalizations of museums in Indonesia is it is, first of all, uh, it came up uh, during the pandemic and it's not really uh, planned for the long-term operations. So mostly it's uh, it's kind of like what we have uh, what we are doing now. It's a, it's a seminar, or uh, or presenting uh, of of using social media. So Instagram is is very popular in Indonesia. I think Indonesia is uh, the third uh, largest uh, users of Instagram in the world, and Facebook also, but not uh, digitized museums uh, like what. Uh, we we have we see in in Europe, America, Australia, Japan, they are very advanced, and actually they have been started uh, digitized museum far before the pandemic. So it has nothing to do with the pandemic, but the pandemic increased uh, the facility. But uh, 
what my suggestion is to my uh, friends in uh, Asia is I think uh, digitalization and virtual museums are very useful. Even if the pandemic is over, I think we should uh, try to uh, maximize uh, the the benefit of of digitalization because the outreach is amazing. So you you can reach not only your local uh, segment but also international segments. For for examples like museums in Ternate about uh, about uh, spice uh, uh, spice uh, tra uh, trail right well i mean uh, the former colonies uh, in europe uh, like spain uh, portugal netherlands uh, england they are all interested uh, to see what's going on in ternate for example or, or banda so i think uh, what what we need is uh, consistency and commitment of human resources. But if you have uh, two or three uh, people with a very good sense uh, for uh, IT, I think uh, you will get a lot. You will receive, you will achieve a lot. So I think Estrella has uh, shown has proved she can do a lot uh, in Thailand with social media. I think uh, in other uh, countries should also follow. But uh, please uh, think and invest in a uh, digitized uh, museum, I think. And also for the training that, uh, that we, are, we are going to organize in Indonesia when the pandemic is over, I think it's some, uh, I hope, sometimes uh, next year. Actually, we, we still uh, hope uh, to have the training uh, in the fall, uh, sometimes uh, November or December. But looking at the situations in Indonesia now and also priority of the Ministry of Education and Culture, I'm not very uh, optimistic about it. So I think in 2020, uh, 21, uh, we, we will organize uh, trainings again. And the good news is uh, when these uh, three years cooperations uh, over, uh, Indonesian government has already asked for continuations. So maybe there will be another uh, three years cooperation, something like that. It's a, it's a lot of uh, experience and, uh, that, and lessons we have learned from the previous trainings from Indonesia because the participants are about uh, 60 uh, museums from all over Indonesia. And uh, thank you very much, Nadia. Uh, okay. I think that's what I can share. Uh, thank you, Mahasti. So uh, uh, I think uh, today uh, we have a very uh, encouraging uh, uh, example uh, from uh, uh, Estrella and uh, from uh, all of uh, the uh, Dutch Trading Post Heritage Network members and also from uh, uh, Hasti. So uh, I would like to uh, conclude uh, this uh, talk uh, today. So uh, during uh, this uh, pandemic uh, situation, so uh, we should be uh, more uh, creative uh, using uh, the digital uh, platform uh, that can be uh, published uh, online. Uh, so uh, our uh, activities and uh, our creativity can be, uh, can, uh, be uh, enjoyed uh, by uh, the public. So I think uh, all of us uh, agree that uh, the uh, online uh, or digital platform uh, will be uh, the uh, best solution for uh, this situation. So uh, now, uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, Estrella, for uh, all yeah, for all the Dutch uh, Trading uh, Post Heritage Network member, uh, Remco, uh, Kumiko, uh, Maulana, uh, Noshiat, uh, Afzal, uh, and uh, Rosli. So uh, I would like uh, to uh, ask uh, my uh, colleagues uh, from uh, Indonesian Institute of Architects, uh, Aditya, uh, to uh, give a uh, closing uh, for this uh, talk. So uh, please, uh, Aditya. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, actually, for the, all the speakers. Uh, regarding to the EIE, we will 
uh, to say thank you and all the participants also and hopefully this uh, um, experience network can uh, make us to, uh, more learn to to keep touch and stay uh, stay alone and stay uh, together even though we we in the distance okay thank you everyone <laughs> see you thank back you. to the Bye -bye. pda so uh, i uh, would uh, give uh, this uh, to the host uh, abi uh, because uh, he will uh, ask uh, all of us to uh, take uh, photos uh, together okay thank you thank you miss estrella mr remco mr maulana Mr. Rosli, Mr. Afjal, thank you so much. And for all the attendees, yeah, for the sharing. So we know the current station um, about the museum in your region as well. Venture is a very interesting story. So we can learn and support each other, right? Yeah, once again, big applause. And thank you so much for all the panelists. Uh, okay, maybe this is for the last session the mandatory sessions maybe we can turn on the photograph maybe we can turn on uh, our video for the last photo sessions for all attendees as well okay nice okay so everybody has uh, already okay i will check it one two Three. Okay, once more. Okay, uh, make it fun. Yeah. Okay, one, two, and three. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, guys. See you. See you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank, you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. See you all in the next Obrolan Heritage or Heritage Talk. Hello, Hey. Arosli, halo. Ya, sampai jumpa.